you'd open that please to Matthew chapter 6. I think this will be a fairly simple message, but at the same time, I think you're going to get something really out of this that you've never gleaned before. Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 19, and we stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. Jesus is speaking as he says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth not corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, the whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. I want to talk to us tonight on the topic of pennies from heaven. Pennies from heaven. Master, we thank you, God, for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We're so grateful every time that we come into the house of God and experience the presence of a resurrected Savior. God, the time has come that the Word of God must go forth, and in order for your Word to accomplish anything in the hearts of the hearers, we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And God, tonight we ask that your anointing would reside upon your messenger. Help us, Lord, to deliver this Word according to your divine will. Let every word that's spoken, God, find its way directly to the heart of the hearer, that everyone that's in this building, everyone that might hear this message by tape, those that might hear it by the internet, God, that each and every person hearing this message tonight would be touched, Lord, that they would be encouraged, that their hearts might be lifted up, that their faith might be uh, established firmly in you, for we ask it tonight and none other than Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated tonight. Many this evening will preach in various churches that as Christians we are to live our lives in such a way that when we have died and reached eternity, we shall have treasures awaiting us. But this is not the intent of this portion of Scripture. In truth, the Lord is telling us that where we do our banking is not only where we make our deposits, but also where we make our withdrawals. So many want to live their lives sowing unto the flesh or making deposits relative to the carnal man or that which is fleshly and expecting that they will somehow be able to make withdrawals from the realms of the spiritual and the supernatural. But life on this earth does not work in this way. Where we make our deposits is where we also are able to make our withdrawals. If you deposit at Compass Bank tonight, then you cannot go and make a withdrawal from uh, Bank of America. Where your money is is where you got to get it. That's right. Where you put your money is the same source, the same place you've got to go to get it. And Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 6, it's not telling the people of God that we're to lay up treasures in heaven so that when we die there will be treasures there for us. No, that's not what he's saying. What he's actually saying is where you do your banking is not only where you make your deposits, but it's also where you make your withdrawals. He said, therefore, if you're going to build a fortune in this life, build it in the heavenlies. Build it in the land of God. Build it in the city of God. Build it where dust and moth doth not corrupt and steep. thieves do not come in to steal. Put your treasures where they cannot be touched by human hands, where they cannot corrode. He said, because where you make your deposits is also where you make your withdrawals. A lot of people think that this portion of Scripture is all about the hereafter. It's not about the hereafter. It's about the here and now. The Lord is trying to help us to understand that if 
we build our banking account in heaven, then when the time for need comes and we're in need of getting hold of some blessing from God, we have something to draw from because our account is full and we have saved up and we've established our treasures in heaven and not in the earth. If you read in Galatians 6, verses 7 through 10, and you've heard me mention this many, many, many times, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What you put into the bank is what you're able to get out. Amen. I remember the story of the little girl, I think I've mentioned this before, and she and her daddy and mom had started a new mission, a new work, just like we've got, and there wasn't but she and her daddy and her mom in church one evening. And it came time for the offering, and she watched her daddy peel a $10 bill out of his wallet and pop it into the offering plate. And after the service, she watched her daddy take that same $10 bill out of the offering plate and kind of make a record of it, you know, of the giving. And he's kind of shaking his head like, oh, Lord, this just isn't quite enough for what we need. And she looked at her daddy, and with all the sincerity in the world, she said, Daddy, if you'd have put more in, you'd have got more out. <laughs> now, isn't it like a kid to see things so plainly? Amen. The Bible says, out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> and it's so interesting because she said, if you'd have put more in, you'd have got more out. Amen. There are so many people that are not in church tonight who when calamity comes, they're going to run for the house of God wanting to take something out, but they haven't put anything in. Amen. And they have not established their treasures on the other side where dust and moth doth not corrupt. And instead they think that they're going to be able to reap that which they have not sown. They think they're going to be able to claim a benefit and reward for that which they have not deposited. You do not gain interest on money you have not put in the bank. Right, amen. If you're going to put it under your mattress and bury it, then honey, when you go back there, all you're going to get is exactly what you put there. But if you want it to work for you, if you want it to gain interest, if you want it to grow, then you need to invest it somewhere. You need to bank with it somewhere. And God is telling us in Matthew 6 that the best place to do your banking is in heaven. For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Amen. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. To sow unto the spiritual tonight, one must engage in disciplines and exercises which many would judge in the natural or in fleshly terms to be ridiculous and worthless. Going to the house of God tonight and subjecting ourselves to teaching and preaching is seen by the secular world as a waste of time and an exercise in futility. But for those of us who possess spiritual life, it is the means whereby our souls are fed, our spirits uplifted, we're inspired, and we are encouraged. Amen. Amen. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 21, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. But it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Amen. You see, Tommy, 
Preaching is designed to save. Preaching is designed to be a positive experience. Preaching is designed to do something constructive. When you sit and listen to a preacher preach, and it is not uh, bringing about some positive and constructive effect in your heart and in your life, he's not preaching right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Because it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The world thinks tonight that our being here in the house of God and listening to the preacher bellow, that this is just futility. It's a ridiculous waste of time. But we know tonight that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that are lost. And I've got news for you tonight. We call ourselves saved by faith tonight, but there's not a one of us that will be saved if we don't keep this faith to the end. And part of the reason we're here tonight is to make certain that we keep our faith steadfast to the end. Prayer tonight is also seen by the world as one's merely beating the air with words that go no further than the ceiling. But to the people of God, prayer is the intimate communication between the Creator and His creation. It goes far beyond the mere expression of wishes, desires, and wants but rather includes the spoken adoration and appreciation of a spoiled child, listen to me now, of a spoiled child lavished upon by a loving and benevolent father. That's what prayer is. It's the intimate communication between the creator and his creation. And we, his Amen. children today, are spoiled rotten. Amen. <laughs> and therefore, prayer includes the spoken adoration and appreciation of a spoiled child who has been lavished upon by a loving and benevolent father. Amen. When we pray, we've got something to say because God's been good to us. We've got something to say because God has lavished us with his blessing. He's lavished us with his help. He's lavished us with his love. Amen. Glory to God. I didn't have much to say to my father growing up as a kid. But if my father had lavished me with love and lavished me with blessing and lavished me with positive things, I'll bet you a dime to a donut, I'd have had a lot more to say. Amen. But you know, my heavenly father has done those things for me. And therefore, every day, all day, when good things happen, the first words off my lips are not words to one another, not to the person sitting beside me, but the first person I talk to is the source of all my blessing. Hallelujah. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So when something good comes my way, the first words off my lips are, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because I'm going to talk to my loving, benevolent, heavenly Father first and thank Him, glory to God, for the good things He's done for me. Well, hallelujah. The world looks at us and thinks we're out of our mind. Well, good grief, that person, you know, something good happens and they're thanking God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right, baby. That's right. Because my heavenly Father has lavished benefits and lavished his love upon me. And sweetheart, when I experience anything good, when I experience anything positive, when I experience anything that lifts me up rather than puts me down, the first thing I'm going to do is communicate with my Heavenly Father who is the source of all good things. Hello now. Hebrews 13, 15, and 16 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Some people don't even think about worship God, worshiping God till they come to church. And then there are those of us that live a life of worship. And every time something good comes, the first words off our lips are, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Because worship is not a Sunday morning experience. Worship is not a Sunday night experience. Worship is a Monday through Sunday experience. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, glory to God. It pours off the lips of God's children like water off a waterfall. Amen. 
and just trying to stop it. Amen. Amen. Paul says, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. How often? Continually. Amen. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. How often do we give God the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name? Continually. Always. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. Now, do you hear this? Paul said to do good and to communicate. Forget not. See, a lot of people in the habit of God blesses them, and they forget to talk to him about it. They forget to say anything about it. They don't see it necessary to mention that God might very well have been involved in the process of what just transpired. But Paul said, to do good and to communicate. Talk to God about it. He said, don't forget to do that. Don't forget to do that. Do you hear me tonight? When God blesses you, don't forget to thank God for it. Because God is pleased when we offer him the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. How often? Continually. All the time. Every day. All day. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. <laughs> Gee, Tommy, I don't do it so wrong after all, do I? Well, you know, that brother from Houston, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Every other word off his lips is glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I have to go to the bathroom, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Run out of toilet paper, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Had to find the manager of the restaurant. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I hate when people do that. That's so overblown. It's so overdone. I don't know why they just got to say that every five seconds. Everything he said, he, he, everything he said, he was glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for. Well, good grief. There wasn't nothing to glory to God and thank you, Jesus, about. But you know what? If that boy's ever been where I've been, if he'd ever been to the, to the door of death like I've been to the door of death, then, honey, maybe he appreciates the fact that he has life in his body to go hunt up the manager of a restaurant and ask for toilet paper. Amen. See, we don't appreciate the little things in life a lot of times. But you know what? Maybe he does. Maybe every little stupid thing that you don't see the need to glory to God, thank you, Jesus, for, he does. Amen. Maybe he appreciates every moment in life. Maybe he appreciates the opportunity that life gives him every single moment of every single day to do every mundane task that you could ever want to do. Amen. And therefore, he offers to God continually thanksgiving and glory to his name. My Lord, have mercy. Listen to what Paul says to the Thessalonian church in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Without ceasing. Again, it is a continual, constant exercise in communication. He said, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. In what? In the big things, no. In the little things, no. He said, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you? That you give thanks in everything? Is that the will of God for you? Listen to this. You're going to get something out of this. Before this service is over, you're going to get something you ain't never got before. Paul said, no. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Good and bad, give thanks. See, even when bad things happen, Mother, if we look hard enough, we can see the good in it. My house burned down, but I'm still alive. Amen. The most terrible circumstance 
if we look hard enough, we can still see the positive in it, and it gives us something to thank God for. And Paul says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. In everything give thanks. Why? Because everything that happens is the will of God for you. Amen. That's right. Amen. My, my house burned down. Thank you, Jesus. Because God's doing something. Yes, amen. Look at all these people that lost their homes in Louisiana right. in the last couple of months. How many of those people were poor people that couldn't hardly get food to their mouth week after week, month after month, day after day? How many of those people struggled uh, ongoing to try to get government aid and government benefits to, in order to survive? And yet, like I said, when all this happened, I said, you watch and see what God's going to do. God's going to bless those people so that they're going to have stuff like they never had before. They're going to have a quality of life like they never had before. Amen. Everything they never had, they're now going to have. And all of a sudden, people who a month ago or a year ago or ten years ago wouldn't have looked at that poor person in Louisiana and right. thought one thing about them was handing them checks for $10,000 a day because in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Thank God for the hurricane. Thank God for the storm because when it's all said and done, it's the will of God for you and something good. All things work together for good to them that love God and who are the called according to his purpose. Hallelujah! In everything give thanks. This is the will of God concerning you. Thank God for everything because he knows what he's doing. We may not understand it. But God knows what he's doing. Hallelujah! You get it? Do you get it? Isn't that good? Lord Jesus, have mercy. Giving is a waste of money to the unsaved and the unregenerate, but to those of us who have tasted of faith and have partaken of salvation, giving to the work of God and in support of his ministry is an investment in eternity. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, when I peel off my tithe and hand it to the preacher or put it in the offering, I don't see it's no investment in eternity. It's just throwing my money down the john. No, it's not. That's an investment in eternity. But listen to this now. Not only is it an investment in eternity, but just like any other investment, it has certain specific guarantees which are offered by none other than the Lord God himself. Amen. You know what, Tommy? When you invest in certain stock, if you've done your homework, then you're kind of going to have some idea of what kind of a return you might or might not get on that stock. Right? But see, when you invest in God and you invest in eternity, God himself guarantees a return. He doesn't say you might get a return. He says you will get a return. He doesn't say you may get a return. He says you will get a return. Luke chapter 6 and verse 37. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. Give. And it shall be given unto you. And it shall be given unto you. And it shall be given unto you. Not it might be. Not it may be. But it shall be given unto you. Good measure. In other words, with a good return. It's not going to come back the same amount that you gave. It's going to come back good measure with a good return rate on it. Pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. My Lord have mercy. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. What does that mean? It's very simple. If you give liberally, you'll receive liberally. If you give sparingly, you'll receive sparingly. I've told you the story about Brother McCoy in Pennsylvania and how he wanted to bring me around and introduce me to some churches so that we could try to generate some money for our work in Pennsylvania. 
But I'd go to the church, and uh, there we'd be sitting, and at the end of the service, they'd give me a love offering, and all of a sudden, the preacher'd have to get up, and she didn't have a 30 or 40 people, and she's saying, folks, uh, the electricity about to be cut off at the church, and we need a new roof on this church, and we really need you to help us. And I'm looking out over that sea of faces, and bless their heart, I know in my heart that everybody in that congregation has already given everything they can afford to give so that they could pay me to come in and be a blessing and an encouragement to them. And I'm sitting there, and how in God's green earth can I not give? How in God's green earth can I not respond? So I get up and say to the pastor, here's your love offering back. Use it for the electric bill. Here's your love offering back. Use it toward the new rough on the church. Yes, well, Brother Morrow, the whole point of your going over there was to receive so that you could be on the receiving end. Yes, but with the same measure that I need, it shall be needed back to me. The same way that I give is the same way that I'm going to receive. How do you think over the last 10, 12, 13 years of ministry that I've been in this ministry, we can't get enough folks to fill the church, but somehow, some way, there are people that write us checks for $1,000, that write us checks for $5,000, that write us checks for two and $3,000. How do you think this happens? I'll tell you why. Because when it comes to me, it's God's. And I'm free to give it back. That's right. Amen. That's right. And God doesn't leave me hanging. Amen. He doesn't leave me dangling. I'm never sitting there dangling off the edge of the cliff without any hope of help. Because according to the way that I give, the Bible said, that is the same exact way that I will receive in return. So even though giving to the world is a waste of money. I know today that it's an investment in eternity that has very specific guarantees that are offered by none other than God himself. So the truth of the matter is today this. It is not our duty to act and live as though the only rewards we'll ever see are in eternity. But rather it is our choice today to decide where we want to do our banking. Remembering that we shall only be able to make withdrawals from the same source with whom we have been making our deposits. Do you hear me now? Amen. Amen. That's what the Lord is telling us in our primary text tonight. Listen, in Mark chapter 10, verses 28 through 31, then Peter began to say to him, Lord, lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. See, it's not about building your treasures up so when you get to heaven you'll be a millionaire. No, it's about building your treasures up so while you're still here on earth you're a millionaire. Amen. The Lord said, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. And in the world to come, eternal life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last first. You know, it's funny, but the Bible said he'll have all these things with persecution. Because no matter whether you're rich on the other side or whether you're rich on this side, rich people have certain things they have to live with that we don't have to live with. Ain't nobody want to kidnap your children and hold them for ransom because you ain't got no money. But you be a Vanderbilt or you be somebody that's got some money or a Trump and you've got a higher security to keep your children safe every day of their life. They can't even go into a public place without having somebody who's hired to protect them. Why? Because when you've got something, you better believe somebody's going to be after it. And that's why the Lord said, he said, if you've forsaken all these things, he said, you will receive a hundredfold now in this time. Not in eternity, now in this time. But then he says, 
you'll have all these things with persecutions. In other words, you're going to get them, but you're going to get the troubles that come with them. The Bible said the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The devil's going to be after you like, like all hell fire. If you invest in heaven, if you invest in eternity, and you do everything in your power to invest in the world to come, then children, you better know that there are going to be persecutions that come with that. Because there are going to be thieves, and there are going to be those who want to kidnap your children. There are going to be those who want to take down your grandchildren. There are going to be those who are going to try to get your child on crack, who are going to try to get your child to go out weekend after weekend and drink themselves drunk. There are going to be those who are going to try to get those in your family that you care about to leave the way of God and go after the way of the world. These persecutions are part of what comes with blessing. These persecutions are part of what comes with riches. Amen? I like what the Word of God says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 7. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There are those people that make themselves so rich, Tommy, they, they don't even know what to do with all their money, and yet they haven't got a thing in the world. They're as poor and miserable as can be. But then it says, there is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. You see, there are those that give and give and give till they haven't got nothing, and yet they've got everything. Yes, That's why I like that song that the king's been singing. Shake hands with a poor boy who owns everything. Yes, <laughs> Shake hands with a poor boy who owns everything. Because when, as we give and we invest in eternity, it may appear to the world that you haven't got nothing, but you've got an awful lot. Amen. And even though Peter and John, as they approached the temple, said to the little cripple man, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. I don't have a lot of riches in this world, but honey, I've still got something. I've got the name of Jesus. I've got the power of God. I've got the presence of the Holy Ghost. And that means I can still offer you something. Right, amen. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And that man got a healing. He was expected a few pennies from heaven, but he got a healing instead. Because even though God's people may not look like they have a whole lot in this life sometimes, they've got a whole lot more in the bank that they can draw from. It just depends on whether or not they're investing in the right places. It depends on whether or not they're putting their money in the right bank. If Peter and John weren't investing in heaven, then they would not have been able to make that withdrawal. You hear me now? We want God to do supernatural things for us, but we tend to operate in the natural. We tend to operate as though this world is all we have and everything that goes on here is all that we're ever going to deal with. But the reality is, if we're children of God and we live by faith, we know that there is more to this life than what we see with the naked, natural eye. Lord, have mercy. The rewards we reap in serving the Lord are reaped both in this life and in eternity. We are able to draw from the wealth of salvation only when we have invested the time and energy to dig that well and establish its depths. Where we put forth our efforts and make our investments, Mother, that's the same place where we're able to withdraw our benefits. Amen. Isaiah 12, 1 through 3, And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become thy salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Where you invest is where you make your withdrawals. 
Where you put your treasures is where you're able to go get them and withdraw them and use them as you need them. Amen. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Because they're investing elsewhere. They're investing in a bank that is not seen by human eyes. Listen to Psalm 37, 1 through 6 this, uh, this evening. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noon day. Pennies from heaven. Sometimes little things come our way, little blessings. Just seem to fall out of the sky like pennies from heaven. But they only happen that way if that's where we do our banking. Because you can't get out what you haven't put in. Amen. Do you hear me now? Amen. Jesus said, lay up your treasures on the other side. That doesn't mean you got to wait till you die before you're going to be able to enjoy those treasures. Amen. No, no. That just means you're going to have something to draw from when you need it. That just means you're going to have a supernatural source when the natural sources have run dry. But if we'll invest in eternity, then God will give us a blessed temporal uh, experience here on planet Earth. If we'll invest in eternity, the Lord said that if you've given up houses and lands and all these things for the gospel's sake, he said, in this life, you're going to get back a hundredfold. So tonight I encourage us, do your banking in heaven so that when you need those pennies, Pennies can come, pennies from heaven, because you can only withdraw from where you've put in. Amen? You can only take out from where you've made your deposits. Would you stand with me tonight? I told you it would be a fairly simple message tonight.